Okay, a card at a Sulagum aggregation should may own a Calgan show preview the Clarston and Kerber live and show um uh an oct to me show an oct con just piece of context I was reading to all the hurt eve air on uh CEO uh I guess uh on true level as the kinto will and CEO lean to shock in the Dalty Galair um would be Carco Michigan and Winter Show um so I hope you're all well. Owen Kelly here, Principal Caution Kerba. We're here tonight to do a short session on uh, to give you some information on C on CAO. And um, I have Patricia here, Garment Rowan Um, who's the expert, I suppose, in this area. And certainly she knows a lot more than I do about this. So I'll be passing over the baton to her in a few seconds. And uh, the idea is that uh, Patricia will go through the slides. Um, you can ask questions in the Q&A on the right hand side. Fekatur er yesh to Austin Shane kun kishnikur. And I'll keep an eye on that and then I can feed the questions back to Patricia and we'll see if we can answer them. Egan Dara and Shane, Bavralum, Lerkliff Fui on portal at Orskild. So the the portal for the examinations, this is uh, where students have to register their subjects. Uh, on the examinations.ie website. So I want to do a, a very short three or four slides on that at the end and just to so that you can remind um, students that they must uh, go into examinations.ie, they must register an account, they must check that their details are correct, they can change them if they're not, and then they must check that the subjects, the levels and everything are correct as well. Um, I'd be going through this with students at school, um, but it's important, I suppose, that you have this information as well. This information regarding the, the portal, the examination portal, I've sent it home on VS Mail today, and I also have it up on the school website. So I'm talking to all the around. For question, Began Cotter Show, this presentation will be available on the school website as well. Um, so that you can go back over it if you've missed something. And Egoni Mata Keshtagut, if you have a question, just contact us in the school here and we'll get back to you with the answers. Okay. So, can hello will it on on camera? Chasa team will go Patricia show and have Patricia con dull three rent then a slow non live edition. But with quick the TV shit a car who no made the cool day. Okay, thanks, Patricia. So you're all very welcome and thank you for tuning in. Yeah. So let's hope that this is of some value to you and your students. There may be some students here as well. So I just want to go through, you know, the whole process of the CAO system. And we cover the areas of here, there and Susie. So for anybody who doesn't know, the here is the higher education access route to education. There is the disability access route to education. And Susie is where a student, if they're eligible, can get a grant for going to college. Through the here and there, you get in on lower points and there's a lot of help and support in college. You don't get any money to here or there, but you get in on lower points. Susie is the one that anybody who is eligible, it's it's um, huge advantage because their registration fee is paid and depending on where they go to college, if they're outside Galway, they may qualify for the full grant. If they're in Galway and they're very close to whether they go to ATU or Ulskun Nagalivan of the University of Galway, they wouldn't get as much. But the most important thing I feel is that your 3,000 euro registration, registration fee is paid each year. They can also apply for post leaving cert courses, which are one year in duration mostly, and that's considered the start of your third level education. Again, just going back to Susie, somebody that may choose to do a post leaving cert course, it is considered to be the start of your third level education and the Susie grant kicks in for the PLC course. Lots of students are actually opting for post leaving cert courses, even when they do have sufficient points for a course that they have applied for, because they may still be between two minds as to whether they've chosen the right course and a year out, outside the leaving cert is a very, very valuable year because students grow up very much in that year and it gives them a breather and it gives them a chance to have a relook at what courses they may apply for. Going to college and picking the wrong course can be a very expensive mistake because you're looking at your 3000 registration fee if you don't qualify for a grant. You're looking if you do a year and you don't like the course, you're caught for fees as well. And 
for the PLC course, it costs maybe maximum two or three hundred euros. So it, it may be something to consider if you're not 100 percent sure that you're going down the right path. And of course, there's a huge amount of apprenticeships coming on board, not just the craft apprenticeships, but apprenticeships in a whole wide range of areas. And again, you are earning as you're learning with your apprenticeship courses. What I would like to stress and I do every year is that it's very important that your son or daughter makes the choice for themselves. It's their responsibility and it is their decision at the end of the day. However, with all our help here in the school and talking to yourselves and talking to their friends and family, like you, the parent is an extremely important cog in this wheel. So it's give them all the help and advice that you can be there for them, but if at all possible, just ensure that at the end of the day, they make that decision for themselves. Although, you know, they need to take ownership of that decision at this stage because you are looking at the next three to four years of their life. And if they pick a course that they don't like, there's a huge risk of them dropping out of that course. And that affects their self-esteem as well as everything else. And then they have to start all over again, maybe the following year. So what um, information when they are considering and you're all sitting down and you're looking at the course choices it's very important to look at the subjects taught on that particular course what will i be studying year one year two year three is there a work element is there a placement abroad during my three or four years placement what options are actually within the course itself what are the career options when i complete this course Will distance from home be a factor? And this is becoming a bigger factor each year with the cost of living. If they're going to leave Galway and if they're going to be studying in Limerick or Cork or Dublin or wherever, accommodation is extremely expensive. And some students are very lucky, even if they get accommodation, we hear all kinds of horror stories every year where they're commuting to college from, you know, far distances from their college. So it is actually a factor. It's something that every parent and student has to think about today. You know, can I afford to leave home? Can I afford to uh, go to another county? Or, you know, will I get accommodation? And can I afford the fees for that accommodation? So it's, it's a big decision that you also have to make. So where do you get the information for all of the courses? Uh, there is every single college in the country has what they call a prospectus. It's a, it's a booklet with all of the information about all of the courses, but not just the courses, but all of the activities and the extracurricular activities available for all students while in college, so that it makes it a very, very enjoyable experience for them. You also can go on to all the college websites online, and there are two very, very good specific websites, which are Qualifax and Careers Portal, where they have all of the information that your son or daughter will need when they're doing the research and they're working on all of those at the moment anyway. Open days again are very, very important. If your son or daughter wants to leave Galway, for example, they would have been to to um, Ulskan the Gulliver, University of Galway at this stage and lots of the students would have visited ATU. But outside of that, it's very important that they visit the college that they're considering studying because they may not just like the building. It can be just something very simple that they would say, look, I couldn't see myself studying here for the next three or four years. So very, very important. If they can't make the actual open day that they will make arrangements with the college and they can be very accommodating. So if they themselves or one of their friends wants to visit the college outside the open days just to get a feel for the college and just to feel for how big it is, how small it is, what the lecture halls are like, etc, etc. And what again are the extracurricular activities if they're very sporty, if they're big into music, are they big into arts or what is the, what is the other very important hobbies and interests that they have? OK, so also online and unfortunately uh, the CAO are not printing a handbook anymore, so it's all online, but every item of information that you would need is available online in this handbook. So it's very important to read, particularly the, the yellow pages, which give all the information. I don't know if it's yellow or white online at the moment. It used to be yellow, but it may be white. So apologies for that. I'm not sure which color it is, but it has all of the information regarding deadlines, etc. And then all of the college courses are there. There's no information about the actual course. It's just the code and the name of the course. So how many courses can your son or daughter apply for? They can apply in total for 20 courses. So there are what they call level six and seven courses, which are offered by 
the Institutes of Technology and the Technological Universities. And if you go to university, you're offered a level eight course. So you can choose up to 10 at level eight and six, level six, seven. You can also choose 10 courses. So what does that mean? So a level six course is for two years and following the two years you get, if you go to a technological university or an institute of technology, you get recognition after two years. So you get a higher certificate in education based on the course you're doing. If you continue on for a third year, you are getting further recognition and you have a, an ordinary level seven degree. And if you stay for the fourth year, you have a level eight degree. So the Institutes of Technology and Technological Universities offer a kind of ladder of opportunity. So, for example, after two years, if somebody does a certificate course and they decide, you know, I really would love to go abroad, I'd love to take a year out, I'd like to do just to work and earn a bit of uh, some money or whatever. They can leave that course and then decide maybe for a few years that they want to go abroad, whatever. And uh, having done that, they realize, you know, I need to get my level seven or level eight degree if I want to get promotion or if I want to have, uh, you know, a better education. They can come back and start off at level seven. They don't have to go back to day one. So having done two years, they can then go on and start their level seven after, and then they have done their third year and stay on to do level eight. So it, it, with the universities, you get a level eight degree and you don't get any recognition until you complete that level eight degree. So it's just a very different way of, you know, getting your certificates and your ordinary degrees and your higher degrees. You need to, to choose your subjects in order of preference. So as I was saying earlier, you can apply for 20 courses in total, so 10 at level eight, but you need to put them down in order of preference. So number one is the course that you really, really want. Number two, you put down, if I don't get my number one choice, I'm happy to take my number two choice, three, four, etc. So don't just jot, just don't fill up the page with 10 courses that you haven't researched. It's extremely, extremely important that if you are putting down 10 courses that you have studied those 10 courses in detail because nobody knows whether they're going to be offered number one, two, three, four or whatever. So you need to be happy that whatever stage you're offered a course, whether it's one or four, that you want to be happy to take that course. So what's involved in third level? So there are college requirements, there are faculty requirements and there are points. So I'll go through each one of those. So for in the college requirements, for example, you need five ordinary six grades in your leaving certificate if you choose a level six or seven course that I was speaking about earlier. For level eight courses, you need a pass in six subjects, which must at least two at H5 and four at ordinary six. That's the minimum requirement. But as we all know, depending on the course you apply for, you would need probably all H, course H1s to H8 or H7, sorry. It just depends on, but the minimum entry requirements for those courses are, as I mentioned there. And then your faculty requirements. So for example, just a H4 or H3 in Irish for primary school teaching, a H4 in maths for engineering in most universities and technological universities. So these are, as well as the course requirements, you have the faculty requirements as well. And then you have the points. So in order for your son or daughter to get an offer next August, they will need to have met the college requirements and the faculty requirements and the points for that particular course in that year. So nobody, you know, I get the question asked all of the time, would the points go up, would the points go down or whatever? There is no guarantee, we do not have any control over the points system. And in fact, it's all of the students, every student in this country who is going to be sitting the Leaving Cert in August are in competition with one another. The universities don't decide the points, the Department of Education don't decide the points, the school doesn't decide the points, the actual the students themselves decide what the points are going to be because whatever course you apply for, depending on how many more people are applying for that same course in the same college, they look at and they will take the top number of students that has applied for that course and that will determine what the points are for that particular course in any year. But it's extremely important that your son or daughter 
knows the course, what it involves in the course before they put anything down on, on their CAO and apply, as I mentioned earlier, in genuine order of preference and only apply for a course that you are genuinely going to take. Don't just jot for the sake of filling out. And this happens a lot. They just they say, oh, I filled out, I've put down the 10 courses, but they may not have a clue about half of them. So it's very important that they have research, research, research for those. So that's just an example of what it looks like. So level eight courses, there's there is um, a number there and the level six courses. So you can apply for both. And if, if, for example, they're applying to a uh, technological university or an institute of technology, if that course is offered at level seven and level eight, my, my recommendation would be for them to put it down at level seven because they might have a better chance to get it offered at level seven and then they can put other courses down at level eight. So there's no difference between a course at level six, seven or eight, regardless of what stage they get in, because it's the same course. They're in with the same lectures doing the exact same course for level six, seven or eight. They just offer the course at different levels, but they don't have separate uh, lecture halls. They don't have separate uh, tutors. It's the same course whether you, whether, you, whether you enter the college at level six, seven or eight. So in addition to your points, some courses are called what they call restricted courses and they require more than the Leaving Cert. So they may be an interview, they may be tests, they may be auditions or portfolios or projects. Those courses must be on the CAO on the 1st of February because what happens is as soon as the student applies for a, what they call a restricted course, the CAO contacts the college immediately and then they will be called for whether it's an interview, test, audition, portfolio or whatever. And these usually happen around Easter time. So it's too late to apply for a restricted course after the 1st of February. However, if they change their mind and decide having put down a restricted course that they no longer require it, they can take it off when they come to the change of mind. OK, so that's the restricted courses. So courses like medicine and maybe art courses or music or architecture, depending on the course that does require, as I said, more than the Leaving Cert. And they do get recognition for the interview and the test or the audition or whatever. The deadline, the, the, the cost of the CAO is 30 euro up until this Saturday and then it pops up to 45 euro. So I'm hoping that everybody at this stage have now registered with the CAO. Then what happens in May, um, the CAO contacts your son or daughter and everything is online at this stage. There's no letters in the post anymore, but they will contact them just confirming the course choices and getting them to check to see that their personal details are OK, that the course choices that they've made still remains the same or if they want to change at this stage, they may do so as often as they wish, but there's no additional charge. What you pay, and if you pay before Saturday or if you pay for the 1st of February, it goes up to 45 euro. That cost doesn't change. And when the change of mind comes round, they can change their, their choices without any extra charges. As I said there, if there, if there are no errors, uh, you do not need to do anything. But if there are, uh, the CAO needs to be um, contacted and they do that through their, they can do that through their CEO account or to reply to the email that they received. So I mentioned there, the change of mind will open in the first week of May. But the, the CAO, first of all, will close down after the 1st of February. And the reason that they're doing that is because they're dealing with all of the restricted courses and in contact with the colleges and informing the colleges about all of the students that have applied for restricted courses. So you cannot put on any more courses down after the first week in February. Then first week in May, the change of mind opens. So you're, you have access to your account to put in any additional courses or take a lot of the courses that you have put down, take them off or leave them as they are. As I said, no, no additional charge. But the final date, uh, for change of mind is the 1st of July. So very often students, maybe they leave that decision until they've completed their leaving cert because a lot of students will have about two weeks 
following the last exam that they will do for their leaving cert. And that two weeks is a very valuable time for them to go back to look at the choices that they've made. Their study is over, the stress is over and the exams are completed. So at that stage, what I would highly recommend is that you sit down again with your son or daughter and say, OK, your leaving cert is completed. So let's look and see what the choices are that you've made. Are you still happy with those choices or do you want to make any changes at this point? So just a quick a quick guide there on all of the important dates. So uh, the first one is gone already where. November the 4th, the, the CAO application uh, process opened. So on the 20th of January, like I was saying, is you can apply to your CAO for 30 euro. If you leave it until the 21st of January or any time up until the 1st of February, it bumps up to 45 euro. So now the closing dates, and I'll talk more about the here and there, but the here and there is March, uh, very, very important month, 1st of March and 15th of March for here and there applicants. And as I mentioned, um, closing date for if somebody applied very late for the CAO 1st of May, it would be 60 euro. In May, the online change of mind facility opens, as I mentioned there earlier, and the closing date for all course choices and changes is the 1st of February. Round one, off, round one offers, we're not really sure since COVID, but they usually come out a week after or three or four days after the leaving cert. We don't have a date for the leaving cert results. I'm imagining it would be towards the end of August, but three or four days following that, the first round offers come out. Then following the, that, uh, if your son or daughter didn't get the, the choice they wanted, the second round offers come out after students have accepted their first round offers and they can see how many courses are still available and so on and so forth. The CAO will continue to send out uh, choices until if they, if they can fill all of the, the bums on the seats in the colleges and they don't always fill all of the places, but they will continue to offer places while there are places available. So there's also a very important facility that happens in August, September called um, courses. It's it's vacant places, so lots of colleges won't complete all of it. They won't fill all of their courses, so they offer all of those courses to everybody. So it's called vacant places, so students can look on the list of vacant places. And even if they didn't have the courses on that list listed up to this point, they can still apply for that course in September. So what uh, points will not become an issue at that point, but what will always and remain static is that you must always have the minimum entry requirements. That means the subject requirements for that particular course. You may get in on much, much lower points, but you still must meet the minimum subject requirements. And even if you hadn't made a CAO application up to that point, you can still avail of those vacant place options. So deferring a course, so some students may or may not decide that they are not ready to go to college in September 2024. So they've got the course that they have applied for and they want to defer that course for a year. So what that entails is a student says, OK, I'm, I'm ready to start in 2025, but I'm not ready to start in 2024. So they get in touch directly with the college asking them if they have permission to defer their course. In most cases, the colleges will allow that to happen. What then has to happen the following year is they must fill out the CAO form again and they must put down the code for that deferred course. Otherwise, that will lapse and that course is no longer going to be available for them. Just because they have been accepted and just because they have deferred the place, they must apply for that place again in February 2025. So that's very, very important. So I think I've gone through that there. You reapply the following year and then you will get what they call um, your offer in round zero. You're offered that place before everybody else because you've deferred it and you've applied for it again. So that, that spot is yours regardless of what the points are for that course. If they've gone higher than even that you receive, what you received in your leave insert, you still have that place. 
So just going on to the here, there and Susie. So there's very important dates and they're they're um, they're coming up pretty fast. So first of all, here is for students who are financial financially or socially or culturally read for, for for financial, social or cultural reasons, they can apply to the here application. So on their CAO form on the 1st of February, they must tick a box to say, I wish to be considered as a here applicant. So they look at the income coming into the home. They look at how many brothers or sisters maybe are um, or have or have not gone to college before your son or daughter and they look at the area in which you're living in and they look at if it's a disadvantaged area or if you son or daughter may be the first person in your household to go on to third level. So the 1st of February, very important, they just tick a box to say they wish to be considered for here. On the 1st of March, there's a lot of information that they must complete on their CAO application if they're applying through here. And that's all about their family, their their parents, their siblings, their dates of birth, what you're what you're doing, uh, you know, what your occupations are, etc. And then by the 15th of March, all of the documentation must be in the CAO office by the 15th of March. OK. The same applies for the DARE application, except DARE is for those who have any kind of learning disability or has uh, maybe an ongoing illness or whatever. The dates remain the same. They must tick on the 1st of February that they wish to be considered for DARE. 1st of March, fill, in out, fill out all the information on their CO application. And there isn't as much detail required for the DARE application, but they must have this called, there's a statement that they must fill in about how their disability has affected their schooling. And then again on the 15th of March, all the documentation. So if, for example, they have have a psychologist report or if they have been seen by um, a consultant or whatever, they must supply all of that information and that must be sent to the CAO office by the 15th of March. And the third one there, the SUSE grant, that, that application won't open up until March, April time, and they will be notified by the school when that application opens. If you want further information about here, there, if you go on to accesscollege.ie and uh, they will, all of the information you need for here and there is all up on accesscollege.ie. So finally, most importantly, Gather all of the information you need to read all the information and make sure you're not missing any deadlines for any of the applications. Courses in order of preference and, you know, also maybe have a dead cert course that you're willing to to take if you wish to take that. So just very, very, there's just one thing very quickly, just about, as I was mentioning, post leaving cert courses are separate to the CAO. Apprenticeship courses are completely separate to the CAO and they can also apply for all of those as well as their CAO college choices. Some students also have an interest in traveling to Northern Ireland, Scotland, England or Wales for their colleges and that's done through UCAS. Again, it's a separate application and the UCAS application closes on the 31st of January of this year. And then again, also a number of our students every year goes to, to Europe and that's done through UNICAS. That's the name of the the website UNICAS. If you Google UNICAS, it comes up with all of the colleges in Europe that um, are available for various courses. So that's it. I hope you found this to be of some value. And as the principal said, this will also be up online on our on our website. Gormila Magi. So Patricia Gormila Magi and Shin and I um I just come out and done told us. Thank you very much for for giving us that information. It does a lot in it. And I think some parents uh, will definitely need to look at the video again just to, yes, to catch yeah. up with it. I just see one question there after coming in. Can you apply for a vacant place option if you have accepted a course already? Well, I don't see why you couldn't. No, you can, because really if the, base, the place is vacant, you know, the, there is an offer there so you can talk to the college directly, but I, I cannot see why that should be any. I haven't I, I'm not known personally if anybody who has done that, but it doesn't it doesn't make any sense why you couldn't, because as I said, the place is there. 
and there should be no reason why you couldn't. Okay. Okay. So, um, a chord of to, to coop to a spill of question cur and shin a yes. If you have any questions, um, you can put them into the chat box Q and A at the side there, and Patricia will try and do her best here to answer the questions. And while people might be thinking of a question or two there, I just wanted to briefly, as I mentioned at the start, and hopefully uh, this uh, works for me now. Two seconds, and um. I just want to go through the, the portal for the for the exams, which is very important as well. So do yeah. and okay, it's perfect. Okay, so just um the the candidate self service portal is open now on examinations.ie. So this is where students must uh, go to the website. They must register register uh, their name on that website. Uh, as you can see there, it's opened this morning and it closed on the 2nd of Fiora. And there are a lot of Fiora at the clock, that's Tehina. Um, uh, when students go into it, there will be pre-populated student data there. Students require a few things, their examination number, um, their year head, uh, Garrodine has given those out in the last two weeks. They will need their PPS number um, and they will also need an email that they can be contacted at. Be very careful with this. Please don't use Yahoo Mail or Y Mail. And like uh, Patricia was saying with the CEO, make sure it's an email that they check regularly because this is the way that the, the SEC, the State Examinations Commission, and the CEO will contact you. Okay, this is the only way they contact people. So, first step, they must uh, go to examinations.ie. You will see it there. Uh, they click on the Busker Austin Shen Leaving Cert Candidate Self Portal CSSSP 2024. Nurahin Shin is Jack and Shin, Fekashid Register, Cloru, new click here to confirm su subjects. So Tongwail, Gags and Beryl and Shin, I have Irish and English on the same page there, you have an option to, to go to whichever one uh, suits best. So it's very important that they go into register first, they have to register for um, their exams first. When they go in here, they will need their examination number, they have that, they're, they're, they will, you need your PIN, the first four digits of your PPSN number, your mobile number and an email. And as I said, don't use Yahoo or Ymail emails. Use an email that you use frequently and that you check, that the student checks frequently. Um, and you will need to create a password. This is again, and a password that only they will know and it's important that they know what it is. Sometimes people ring us saying, do you know the password? We have no access to any of the CEO stuff that Patricia has gone through or the SEC, the, the examination portal here. So it's very important that they uh, uh, keep that password safe. Um, Nurheen Shilis Jakam, big sunry on sunry person. Their personal details should be pre-populated there. This will include date of birth uh, and information like that. If there's a mistake with it, at that point, they can fix the error at this stage. Okay, And once they do that, they press register and they will get an email to the email account that they supplied and then they can go to phase two, which is to log in. So a minute ago, I just showed you where they register Ibrahim. Now they're on Iverdo where they are click here to confirm subjects. OK, so in the next section, they will be confirming their subjects. If they're doing any subjects outside of school, they will be adding subjects to it. If the portal has a subject included, that maybe they started in fifth year, but now have changed. Well, then they need to uh, delete that subject at this point. And um, students uh, and yeah, so the main thing I suppose is checking that every subject that they're doing, that they're going to sit for the Leaving Cert, which you can exclude the of go will she air on portal show. So in our hand to stack on, brand new show, it looks like this. You will see subjects, Irish, English, maths, French, accounting, music there. The level you need to check is it higher level or level, new Ganaw level or new level. So they need to put in the level that they are doing. And then on the right hand side, very, very important, we're skull as a as a as a Gwaeltuk school, an Irish speaking school, it is very important that they click the Irish version of the exam paper. If they click the Irish version of the exam paper, they will get the Irish version and they also get the English version as well. OK, so it's very important to click the Irish version of the exam paper. Thank you for the Kyol. They need to click their higher level or level, but they also below Kyol that they click on the elective that they're doing. 
the performing elective, listening elective, and composing elective. So I'd, I would recommend Venig Muller, Galarok Nadine Shen, Lesha Munter Kjol, that they speak to a music teacher just to confirm that they have the, the correct elective chosen. And then if you are doing an additional subject, you add a subject, as you can see at the bottom of the page there, add a subject. And if there's a subject uh, that's incorrectly on the portal, you can see on the left hand side withdraw subject where you can you can click on that and delete that subject. And then finally, very, very tovtuk on tovtuk um, that at the end you confirm the green box at the very end is clicked and all your details are saved and your job is done. Malta Fibre Show, again, the SEC are going to come back through the email that you supply. Uh, they won't be ringing me, they won't be ringing the school, and they won't be ringing uh, yourselves, Natish Mahori. It's the email that's used, like in the CEO, is where they make contact with the person who fill in the, in the data. Okay, so, uh, and yeah, yeah, just be uh, Quinny Gockrod, keep everything, make sure you, whatever password they use that they have written down somewhere that they remember it because they might be uh, accessing this portal again for a few months. Like the CEO, uh, it's set up now, but you might look at it again for a while. So make sure you keep all your, your information. Take a screenshot even of the portal uh, with everything as it is and the way you want it uh, before you confirm it is another good way. And Effect your Latinok Mata Fibina, well, there's a help desk and there's numbers there. And look, uh, there's always ways to, to fix these things. Finally, just our Latinok Dernok, some of the Creek, some important dates com coming up. OK, so I suppose in the Bale, the, the, the language orals, as you can see there uh, from March, we have uh, our mock exams, obviously, in, in uh, almost a week and a half's time. And then April, May, uh, music practical, Monday the 8th. To Friday the 19th of April. Uh, my slideshow has just uh, disappeared. I was back again. Um, and then I'm looking at uh, uh, all the other dates there, um, uh, for, depending on what subjects you're doing, leading sort of ag science, uh, field study, uh, February 12th, and so on, until we get to the uh, June and uh, Tuesday the 4th, and that's the start of the leaving cert on, well, the written exam start on the 5th of June. So in the Scrudo Bale as, as well, these, uh, your, your French, your Spanish and your Irish orals, these happen over the Easter holidays. We don't have the exact dates yet. They all happen generally in the first six days of the Easter holidays. It's very difficult. Um, students have to swap from one subject to another. We do do our best to try and spread out if a person has French and Grail get that they're not on the same day, or Spanish and French on the same day. So we do do our best on that. But the first week of the Easter holidays is when you'll have the, the, the language orals as well. So, according Shin Gokrat Atan Shin, Beg on Coil Oher Show, this presentation will be on the school website if you want to look through it. And just keep an eye on the school website. Every information that we, uh, important information regarding exams and school, we put up on the school website. Um, and uh, you can view that information there. Um, just a brand new, uh, Emeline Kisht Ella. Um, a question here, do, uh, does their name need to match the role as in use in the English version of the Leaving Certificate and College application? Does the, the CAO application and the school one? Yeah, does, it, does their name need to match the role as it? Oh, I understand the role, school role, I think yeah. you're saying. It's just, it's up to themselves. They can decide to have their name in English or in Irish. So just to be aware. So for example, if they put down their name in Irish, when they go on to third level, all of their scripts will be in Irish. All of their exam results will be in Irish. If they have it in English, they will be in English in college. So very, very important. and. Um, for example, if they're obviously they're they're registered with their Irish name in the school, and then if they choose to register for their CAO in English, sometimes the CAO uh, the the SEC sends all of the examination numbers to the CAO, and the CAO endeavours to match up that with the student. So if for any reason they can't match the name with the examination number, and it happens every year, there are a number of students, the CAO will be in contact and asking that student to ensure that they have entered their examination number on their CAO form. That's extremely, extremely important. So just any information that they are, 
they get from the CAO, any queries from the CAO, please tell them not to say, oh, sure, I've done that last week. I did that last month. The CAO will not contact you unless they're looking for something. So always pay heed to your emails from the CAO. OK. OK. I'm going to ask you a question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to Sulum Greva on on session also corrective uh, Dumsa Gaplin Tasha uh, Patricia Gramila Margaret has up on tolls uh, who are doing. Um, uh, if you have any questions in relation to, to the information, please contact the school, please email the school, and we'll get back to you. Um, if we don't know the answer, uh, we will uh, certainly get back to you as soon as we can. So look, uh, Shin will Wimsha, Patricia Gramila Margaret, Tura Agasan.